Something tells me it's mating season right now. They're getting comfortable. And nothing the 600 millimeter with a 2X teleconverter can't handle. Right now, this is a 1200 millimeter lens right now, and I'm getting some nice, juicy bird action. Are you watching birds mate? Yes. 600 millimeter F4 G Master. This is Sony's most extra lens. Well, for 90% of us, it's pretty extra. I mean, who the heck's gonna shoot with a 600 millimeter? But for the rest of the 10%, this is absolutely necessary. I'm talking about sports, wildlife, landscapes. I'll even go as far as to say concerts, aircrafts, trains, super flying humans. But that doesn't mean a majority of us can't be excited for this lens. The tech alone is what makes it very exciting. In this video, we're gonna go over why that is as well as two alternatives that are more feasible to most people. But as a gearhead and gas inducer of YouTube, I really want to break down the cost of this setup. Starting off with the 600 millimeter F4 G Master, $13,000. If your wallet didn't hurt after hearing that, then uh, then uh, please, please hire me wherever you work at. Please hire me because I could use some of that money. Attached to this humongous lens is the teeny tiny Sony A9, which you can get for about $3,500, which I generously say $3,500 because you can pick one up for about $1,000 off if you can catch it on sale. And uh, if you're already spending $13,000 on a lens, what's another $115 for the world's fastest and toughest SD card with read and write speeds to match? One battery, $78, lasts about five hours, good enough. And if you want to be the very best like no one ever was, you can get yourself a 2X teleconverter for $550, making your effective focal length 1200 millimeters. And just to be even more extra, the $479 Kickstarter price Peak Design Travel Tripod, because these noodle arms can't handhold such a beast of a lens. Funny enough, this is Sony's heaviest E-mount lens, but also the world's lightest 600 millimeter. And yet, I'm still complaining about the weight. Wait up. <sighs> Back in my day, a 600 millimeter was 14 pounds and I have to hike 15 miles to the football stadium. Thanks, grandpa. Just kidding, never met my grandpa before, nor do I think he was ever a photographer. To test out this crazy expensive setup, we got a chance to shoot a game of soccer, or for you proper folks on the other side of the world, football. It was the Red Bulls versus the real Salt Lakes, and I just want to thank Sony for giving us the opportunity to shoot a real world sports game. Now just to be clear, no compensations were being exchanged, nor did we get to keep the lens. However, travel and meals were covered, and if anything, both teams got some free, amazing photos from us press peeps. Well, maybe just the other press peeps, because I'm not a sports photographer, so half my photos are probably garbage. Hopefully, I do a good job showing off the tech and the potential of this setup to actual sports photographers. I, however, do do a lot of events, so the fact that this crazy setup can do so well in a situation where I deem is an overkill, it's good news for us wedding photographers. I mean, we're never gonna miss the first kiss from 600 millimeters away. All right, so let's talk about the tech that I was hyping up so much about earlier in this video. So when you have the Sony A9 and the 600 millimeter, you really feel how well both the camera and the lens work together. It's because of the tech inside of the camera and yes, the tech inside of the lens. Let me explain. So Sony A9 recently got an update earlier this year, the version 5 firmware, which uh, introduced real-time autofocus. And that pretty much allows the camera to be faster at detecting and recognizing what needs to be in focus as part of the whole AI and speed model that Sony is going for. The 600mm has this new tech called Extreme Dynamic Linear Motor, which, without getting into too much of a technical mumbo jumbo, was developed in 2018, so it's fairly, fairly recent. So the only other lens that has the same motor is the 400 millimeter. Essentially, what you need to know is the moving parts inside of the lens are delivering a higher back and forth thrust to achieve focus quickly, and at the same time, remaining quiet, smooth, and with minimal vibration. So the camera is doing all of the focus detecting while the lens is reacting to grab that focus simultaneously. And since it can do all of that in the blink of an eye, it can even track a subject coming towards the camera, which is extremely difficult to do with other lenses of this caliber because those use rotational motors. Those are slower to react, therefore more chances to get out of focus shots. 
precisely why we should not be adapting these types of lenses for crucial moments like for sporting, for weddings, or even for wildlife. However, I'm not saying that this $17,000 setup will give you a 100% hit rate. However, the amount of usable shot you'll be getting from this setup will drastically increase. I know you're probably looking at the back of my screen and you're like, Jason Vong is not shooting in raw? Look, in a real world situation, especially for sports, you don't have the time to be editing a bajillion photos that you've taken, especially shooting in purse mode with the Sony A9. Most publications will want your photos right away, especially for social media. I've shot a few concerts before where the articles need to go up minutes after the show is over. They're not gonna sit around, wait for me to pick a photo, up the contrast, raise the exposure, drop the highlights, punch in some presets. They're not gonna wait for that. Hence the need for fast read and write speed cards and files that don't take forever to populate. Well, what if you don't have 13,000 flowers lying around? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You get yourself an RV, you drive onto the middle of the desert, you start cooking up some blue stuff, and that's what you're gonna sell. Bonus point if you are a high school chemistry teacher. Well, you got yourself three options. One, you can rent it if you know you'll only be using it a handful of times. And it's not an uncommon practice. I've brought a 400 millimeter before to shoot a concert from the soundboard, which is pretty damn far. And I would say the ballpark range to rent a 600 millimeter is about 500 or so dollars for seven days. That's how much it costs to rent a 400 millimeter right now off of lensrental.com. Or option number two, for $2,000, you can get the brand new Sony 200 to 600 millimeter G lens. So we're taking a break, or rather we're calling it quits for bird photography and moving on to something a little bit more control. Jet skiers, and they're having a bunch of fun right now. Swapped over to the two to 600, and this lens is no slouch at all. I mean, like this thing is just grabbing focus on their faces and sometimes even their eyes while they're just going around in circles. It's, it's amazing. It doesn't use the same tech as the 600 millimeter. It uses the direct drive supersonic motor, but it's still quick, it's still silent, and it's still pretty damn fast. Yes, it is variable aperture, but it isn't uncommon for this type of long range zoom. You got Sigma and Tamron with their 150 to 600, F5 to 6.3. And while they are significantly cheaper than the Sony version, the extra cost that you'd be paying for for Sony is the speed, reliability, and accuracy which again will be crucial if you do do this for a living. Adapting lenses in a sporting situation or wildlife will be disastrous. And fun fact, Sony will be the first in-house manufacturer of this type of long range zoom lens. Cause I don't see this type of lens of this caliber from Canon or Nikon. So who would want to get a two to 600 lens? The same type of people who would want to get the 600 millimeter. This lens will allow them to be a lot more versatile to get different types of shots in the situation that they're in. And this lens is gonna be for a more broader audience of shooters as well, especially for hobbyists who do a lot of birdings or sports or parents with kids who play a lot of sports. Cause depending on the sport and how far the sideline is, Sometimes a 70 to 200 millimeter is not enough, whereas the two to 600 millimeter will allow you to still get pretty close to the action. Well, if that is still too much, I mean, it's just a $2,000 lens, not counting the camera body, which can still cost $2,000 more dollars or $3,500, depending on which model you get. What other options is still out there for people who want that 600 millimeter focal length? I got one more option. Sony RX10 Mark IV. Built in 24 to 600 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. Now, not to confuse you that it is a full frame camera. It is absolutely not a full frame camera. It's just the range itself is equivalent if you were to use the same type of lens on a full frame camera. The RX10 Mark IV is a one inch sensor size camera, which is smaller than what you would find from an A6000. So it's not gonna be as crystal clear or as bokeh as using an actual full frame camera. But for most people, for most people, it's gonna be good enough. But for $1,600 and a much smaller camera form factor, 24 frames per second and fast hybrid autofocus, I mean, just, and here's something fun. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you a 600 millimeter prime type of person with that big fine glass? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you're someone that has commitment issues. You're always zooming in and out. You're not too quite sure if you're 200, 400, or 600. Or maybe you're that one inch sensor type of person, you know, small, but you got that 600 pack somewhere. 
let me know in the comments down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.